Um, can everyone hear me better today than before? I, I have this second microphone on. Does it make any difference? <laughs> Yeah, is it supposed to be on? Right here. Can you hear me better now? Can anyone? I mean, can you hear me in the back? No? <laughs> because I have a second microphone here. Doesn't doesn't seem to make any difference. Hello? Hmm. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Maybe the volume? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yeah. microphone to speak to make my voice higher but it doesn't seem to work uh, can you just come in in loop okay thank you bye <coughs> hello hello does it does it make any difference no it doesn't okay okay um <coughs> I'll, I'll talk as high as I can, but you have to be quiet. <laughs> okay, uh, yes, uh, last week we talked about where all the materials are for the course. And has everyone found the materials on Hemoldex? Okay. Um, as I make changes to the uh, presentation slides, I put them up on the site again. So I just put up a new set of slides a few minutes ago. So, so it can be different from what was up before. And I sent around a sign-up sheet last time. And it's not that we have to have a sign-up every time, and you don't physically have to be here every time. But I want to know if everyone that's expected to be in the class is on Fronter. And like there's one list. And the last time when I got everyone's names, there were about 15 names on this list that weren't on Fronter yet. So you need to check and make sure that you're signed up for the class if you want to be <laughs> signed up for the class. Uh, so um, if you didn't, do not remember writing your name on this list last time, please uh, write your name on the list this time. <laughs> Um, the other thing is, I think I put this here. No, I didn't put it there yet. Um, okay, I was I was working on a list of everyone's names, and eventually I will put it up here. So that will be the, that will be a place there.
So today we're going to talk about um, chapter two, which is organization strategy and project selection. And that's chapter two of your book. And some people are asking, do you have to, what is the book? This is the book. Yes, do you have a question? Excuse me? That's what I called the IT center for, because I had two microphones. And this one doesn't work. <laughs> okay, here he comes. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's something on there I have to change. working on it. But there's a seat here if you want to sit here. <laughs> so anyway, this is like a large process and you can see how they have it mapped out. The book's supposed to cover this process. And this is the book. It's in the bookstore Larson and Gray and it's a uh, sixth edition. But I, I pointed out before that online you can see there's a link. Um, just end the show for a second. That works. Something. Lecture schedule. Okay, so under required uh, materials, you can see that this book is listed, uh, but it should be the one you purchase is number six. But it is also happens to be available online, version five. So you should, um, you can take a look at that here. And it's very close. I can't tell you not to get this, but it's really close and you, I think you should take a look at this. <laughs> so you, you can decide. Okay, so we were on this. So we're improving every day. We have, I think, a new uh, video cannon. So hopefully this won't go out, I think, this time. OK, so why project managers need to understand strategic process? <coughs> the the uh, book points out two major reasons why um, <coughs> project managers need to understand the strategic process. And that is that the managers have to respond to changes with and make appropriate decisions about future projects. And that managers need to understand their organization and become effective advocates of the project. So they both need to make the right decisions about which projects to support and not support uh, in, on an ongoing basis. And they need to also point out the, the benefits of the project to other people, other stakeholders uh, in the organization. So these are the two main reasons. Working better? Hello? Yes, much better. Okay, great. Now we're going to get interference between my multiple microphones. Okay. Okay, so um, <coughs> I've, uh, since uh, I made some changes to this, I tried to add um, some more examples that are in the book. Uh, so the strategic management provides the theme and focus of the future direction of the firm. And then the major dimensions of project management are both responding to changes from the external environment and allocating scarce resources. So these are the main uh, things that you have to do. You have to respond to changes and 
and allocate resources because the resources of the firm, the equipment, the people that are working towards things are not infinite. Uh, they need to require <coughs> requires st strong links between the missions, goals, objectives, strategy, and implementation. So the four activities of strategic management process are to review and define the organizational mission, to set long-range goals and objectives, to analyze and formulate strategies to reach objectives and implement the strategies through the projects. And this um, it can be broken down into what is the mission of the organization and what are the long-range goals and objectives, what are the strategies, and how do you implement those strategies. So we're going to talk about the, a little bit about each of these things. First of all, what is a mission statement? I like when everything comes up at once. Um, so I added this. The, this is this is a statement in the book also, but I added this. The mission statement identify both the mission and also it leads to the long-term objectives. So what is the mission? That it's description of what we are now. What are we in the business of doing? And then the objectives are what do we want to become? What do we hope to be? Uh, the mission statement components are, for example, uh, what, what makes up the mission statement. It's going to be about products and services. It's going to be about the organization's philosophy. It's going to be about key technologies, about the public image. It could be about contrib contributions to society. It could be directed at certain markets. And usually, the mission statement doesn't change very often. Although if there's a change, like a disruptive change in the industry, then the company might want to redefine their mission statement. <coughs> mission statements tend to give better results if there is a tighter focus on the mission statement, the way it's written. So we can look at page 29 in our book of edition 6, for example. And so many warriors I'm getting stuck. <coughs> so if you look at uh, page 29, there are several examples of mission statements. And you can try to decide um, which ones might be better. For example, they have provide hospital design services. <coughs> that could be a mission statement. Provide data mining and analysis services. Provide information technology services. Increase shareholder value, provide high-level <coughs> uh, products to our customers. So <coughs> in this case, it's about products or services, or it's about, um, um, uh, it's about focus on customers. But these are very brief statements. So I wanted to point out some other, and I also say that the, the mission statements lead to the objectives. And the re objectives are more concrete terms of the mission statement. So uh, that's uh, spelt out on another slide. But if I give an example of Boeing um, uh, and their mission statement. OK. So Boeing says, we are constantly reexamining our capabilities and processes to ensure that our company is as strong and vital as our heritage. In fact, our culture mirrors the heritage of aviation itself, but on the foundation of innovation, aspirations, and imagination. That's kind of a long uh, mission statement, and it's not very uh, specific, but it points to uh, their culture, and uh, they are they are supposed to be talking about what they are. And then the, uh, it says their vision is people working together as a uh, global enterprise for aerospace leadership. And the, usually what happens is that the mission statement leads to what is the, and it leads to objectives, and then the objectives lead to the strategy. 
So the strategy, they have our detailed customer knowledge and focus to it that understands and anticipates and responds to customer needs. Large scale systems integration that continually develops and advances tec technical excellence. And lean enterprise characterized by efficiency, supplier management, short cycle times, high quality, and low transaction costs. So it gets much more s specific when they get to the strategy. If we look at their competitor, which is Airbus, they have a mission statement that is uh, creating the best and safest air aircraft in air is Airbus's mission. And they have a uh, passenger at the heart, airline in the mind. So air Airbus's mission is to meet the needs of airlines and operators by producing the most modern and comprehensive aircraft family on the market, complemented by the highest standard of product support. If you look at the college's mission statement, and I don't know if this has been changed. I, this is what I had from a few years ago. Um, this, I just translate roughly, I guess. Uh, the Cook School in Molda has a vision to be different and better in the uh, educational institution. And so they want to be a meeting place for knowledge building where students and researchers can uh, develop their talents and uh, interests in an open and attractive environment. They wish to be flexible college and uh, that the education reflects the changing in, uh, in orient change oriented candidates <coughs> that um, it de they develop uh, research uh, at um, uh, in international levels and, pr pr and uh, look forward to regional development and cooperation with the society. Uh, we lay uh, weight on the international perspective of the university in uh, teaching and research <coughs> and take the uh, goal that the, in the future that uh, this was a forward-looking environment in Norway within the area of logistics. So that was just rough. <laughs> but, um, but then there's their logo is uh, choose different, choose better. <coughs> so um, as I was saying that the mission statement should lead to the objectives. And the objectives should be more specific con um, being more concrete about what the mission is. And the way to pick the objectives is to have them to be more specific, measurable, assignable, realistic, and time-related. So that means uh, targeting the objective, making uh, indicators that are you can measure over time, making the, um, um, make the objective assignable to people so that they are to groups that are responsible for completion and realistic so it can be done with the resources that are available to the company. This is the organizational objectives um, drive the projects. So they, these are the driving forces behind the projects that are eventually uh, selected and run. This is <coughs> related to figure 2.1 in the book. And then after the objectives, you have the strategies. And the strategies are answering the questions, how are we going to get there? So just let me go back for a minute. I'm sorry, it takes a while to go back. Oh yeah. So anyway, uh, the mission statement we said again, this was uh, what are we now? And then the long-term objectives are what we want to become. And then we that leads to the strategy. And the strategy is how are we going to get there?
Okay. Uh, and that means, like, what do we need to do to reach our objectives? So the components of strategies are usually um, <coughs> understanding the past and current position of the organization. What are the customer's needs, and uh, how do you to understand how you fulfill those needs in order to make improvements? Assessment of the internal environment, which is the resources within the company. What is the knowledge base with the, the knowledge of the knowledge workers? What are the technical resources? What are the financial resources? <coughs> and then the external environment are competitors and regulations, for example. And quite often, uh, companies use SWOT analysis. <coughs> Uh, SWOT analysis is identifying what are your the company's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So um, certain factors are internal to the company, the strengths and the weaknesses. And these are things that are usually under the company's control. And the company has the ability to influence these and change these. The opportunities and threats are usually coming from external factors, and the company might have some limited ability to influence those factors. But uh, usually, it's your, your how do you address the opportunity, take advantage of the opportunities, or how do you address the threats? So, using that, um, uh, companies will assess their current situation. And then they will also identify what are their core competencies, what are they especially good at in order to make these this strategic uh, decisions. The next uh, component is the portfolio. The strategic alternatives are identified. And these um, alternatives, you might have a basket full of projects to choose from. Uh, you have to choose from these projects. And this is this um, the way you choose should support your mission statement and your objectives that you defined earlier. <coughs> and then the fourth step is to implement the strategies through projects. So this is like the flow chart of this whole thing that we've been talking about. We have uh, the mission statement, and there's external environment with opportunities and threats and the internal environment with strengths and weaknesses. And it says, what are we now? What, is the, what are we in the business of doing? And then the company might have uh, new goals and objectives, which lead to a portfolio of strategic choices, and then strategy implementation um, through project selection and project implementation. Uh, so this is, what are we now? What do we do? What do we intend to be? This is the forward looking. And you could say that the objectives and goals are an extension of the mission statement, because it's like we know what we are, and we know what we want to be. And then this is, how are we going to get there? So this is using a, a, a making strategic choices, and then implementing those choices. OK, so <coughs> implementation of projects. Uh, strategy implementation lacks the same kind of structure that usually is available for strategy formulation. So all of this, how do we to make up our mission statement, how do we identify our objectives, is something that's been uh, studied and, and, um, and, and done in many organizations. There's, there's uh, methodologies for coming up with competitive strategies. But the hard part is the implementation is not been, there's a lot of different ways to do this. And not everyone takes, and it's not as, um, as clear which is the best way to do it. So uh, the key areas here are allocation of resources. And this can be for a particular project, or can, it's usually across, project, across different projects, because the organization has to spread the resources. And then a formal and informal organization that supports strategy and projects, and planning and control systems to be sure that activities are performed 
effectively. So that means you have to have some sort of planning of who's going to do what, when they're going to do it, and then a way of checking that it was actually done correctly and, and effectively. And you need to motivate the project to the contributors. Okay. And then there's also prioritizing projects. Um, uh, you, you need to prioritize uh, projects within the strategy of the organization. And if you don't prioritize the projects that contribute to the organization's uh, mission and objectives, uh, then uh, you won't have successful projects. And without a successful implementation stage, uh, success is not uh, possible. So what are the main problems with uh, the project uh, portfolio management, with project management portfolios? And how do you make sure that the right projects are selected and um, how they're implemented? Uh, the one problem is this they call the implementation gap. And what that is is that the, usually the people at the top, the top management, make the strategy decisions. They decide which projects get funded and which projects don't get funded. And then they hand down the projects to the middle management or lower management level. And they're saying, OK, implement this. But it may be the people at this middle level don't know or are, in, are not aware of the overall uh, organizational strategy and objectives. And if there is a miscommunication between these groups or between these levels, this can cause problems. So this is what they're talking about, the implementation gap. They're talking about two different groups of people maybe not being aligned on what is the company's uh, objectives and strategies. Okay. <coughs> then we have the organizational politics. And every organization has politics. So this means that you have some people that are in control and in, uh, interested in their, um, their companies, uh, their own private projects. And you might have a top CEO who has a pet project that wants to support it no matter what. And it may not actually be contributing to added value for the company, for the strategy of the company. But uh, so you usually also have to deal with the politics of the company. And uh, resource conflicts and multitasking. There's not the uh, projects don't exist by themselves in isolation. They are usually exist with other um, projects and that are within the company side by side, maybe contributing to different products and services, but still they might be drawing on the same resources. Meaning if you have a, a, a manager for a group and you have some him in or her involved in different projects, if they spend more time on one project, then they can't spend that time on another project. So you're sharing resources. And when you have uh, this kinds of interrelated relationships and multitasking, this can make there be delays in projects. And anytime you have more multitasking taking place, you add to the delays and cost of the project. So how do you solve these problems? Well, how, can, how can the project manager deal with these things that occur and happen within the company normally? Uh, you need to set integrative criteria and processes for evaluating and selecting projects. So first you have to select the correct projects. And then you need to support higher level strategies and objectives. OK, so why should you have um, a project management portfolio? What are the benefits? Uh, it builds discipline into the project selection process. It links the project selection to the strategic metrics, prioritizes the project proposal 
across common set of criteria so that you're not doing it on politics in the organization, you're doing it on it's meeting the criteria the organization thinks is valuable and associates the resources of the projects that align with the strategic direction. Uh, it allows you to balance risk across projects because all projects have risk and it allows you to stop projects that do not support the organizational strategy and improves communication and support of the project goals. So communication, you don't have this, you don't have this implementation gap. Okay. So how do you classify projects? And we're going to do a short exercise with this. Uh, there's three basic uh, classifications of projects. Okay, so the first um, compliance projects. The compliance projects are projects that you need to do because of maybe there's regulations that say you have to do them. And if you don't do them, you're going to get fined. So if there's some sort of like a CO2 limit on your automobile that the emissions, then you're going to make an automobile that meets those requirements. And if you don't, then you get penalized. So it's like um, if it's something that must be done, either because of external regulations or uh, you get penalties, then that's a must-do project. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't meet your other criteria, you're going to do it anyway. But then there's strategic projects and operational projects. And the operational projects supor support the current operations. That means you're, you're doing this either to improve efficiency or reduce cost or improve performance. And um, so it's kind of just improving the daily operations. Strategic projects are to support the long-term mission of the company. So you're doing this to, you, you, it's usually involved either new products or research and development. And whatever you do with strategic projects should have a strategic value that contributes to the long-term mission. So if we look at page 50 in our book, which is, and look at exercise question number one. Uh, everybody that signed this, it's you didn't sign it before, or you did? <laughs> okay. So some of you have signed before, like the previous lecture. Okay. I was looking for those that had not signed on the previous lecture, <laughs> but that's okay. We'll check, <laughs> see if there's any new ones. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, go to page 50. Look at exercise number one. So where is this exercises, number one? And uh, we want to know um, uh, what are the, how, do, how you would classify each of these projects in terms of these three types of classification systems. So does everyone have a book? Is there one book at each table? <laughs> no? You can look at the online version. Do you have? Does everyone have something that can access internet? <laughs> so if you look at the online version, uh, edition five, that you can get to from the link on the web page. This is actually a good exercise, just so you see that. Uh, you go to that edition, and it's still exercise question number one, even though it might be a different page. So let me just stop this for a second. Required materials, fifth edition.
unfortunately, it takes a long time to download. Yeah. You have it? Yes. Yes. This page? Yes. It can be a different page because in uh, the sixth edition is page 50. No, but it's very close. So it should be exercise one. I don't know why. For some reason, I it's not review questions, it's exercises. So go down a little bit. Do you find it? Uh, exercise, yeah, number one. You manage a hotel resort located on the south beach of the island of Kauai in Hawaii. Do you find that? <coughs> it's finally coming. If you have saved this locally, it will be a lot faster. Okay, so this is the fifth edition. I think it's page 50 or something. Oh, yeah. Hmm? Oh, you mean just put it up here? Yeah. Okay. Because if you write 51, it might take it for the Oh, no. Correct. Yes, so it's this one here. Let's see if I can. Okay. So it says uh, this is on page 51 of this online book. And you say. Uh, you, man you manage a hotel resort located in South Beach on the island of Kauai. Uh, you are shifting the focus of your resort from a traditional fun in the sun destination to an ecotourism. Ecotourism focuses on environmental awareness and education. How would you classify the following project in terms of compliance, strategic, and operational? So you need to classify these projects under each category. So like the first one, convert the pool heating system from electrical to solar power. Compliance? Well, there's no compliance. You don't have to be eco. <laughs> yeah. I, I think with this, they're, they're, remember, it's their mission or their, their objectives to be an eco-tourism spot. Uh, so. Um, how many vote for uh, <coughs> compliance? How many vote for operational? How many vote for strategic? Yeah, well, most people are not voting. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but the most have voted for strategic, and I think it would be strategic. And then it's uh, build a four-mile nature hiking trail. What would you call that? You could call it operational. Why would you call it operational? No, no, no. no just, just give your opinion. <laughs> it could be operational because they're a resort and they need to make these trails so to attract people, and it's maintaining this trail. But it could be strategic also because it's a nature trail. So this is more um, ambiguous as to where you would classify this one, and that that's the point. But it says how easy is it to classify these projects? Some projects are more different than others. What do you know about them? And it's like, how do you choose which category it's going to go in? So uh, renovate the horse barn. What kind of project is that? Hmm? Operational. Yes, just shout it out. It doesn't matter. Nobody knows she's <laughs> saying it. <laughs> uh, replace the golf shop that accidentally burnt down after being struck by lightning. Hmm? How many vote for operational? 
How many vote for compliant? Yes. How many vote for strategic? No. But this, I think this one, they actually took this out of the sixth edition. <laughs> but I, I think that this is actually compliant because it's, it, they also mention in the book that compliant is also dealing with emergencies. So maybe. Uh, launch a new promotional campaign with Hawaii Airlines. Hmm? Yeah, strategic, yeah. Uh, convert 12 adjacent acres to wildlife preserve. I think that's strategic, yeah. Uh, because it doesn't have to do with their daily operations. It was already, they, they were already operating. Uh, update the bathrooms in the condos that are 10 years or older. Operational, right. That one was clear. Okay. Uh, change the hotel brochures to reflect the ecotourism image. Strategic. It's strategic, yeah. Because even though they need brochures, they don't have to update them. No. Um, test and revise disaster response plan. Compliance, Compliance yeah. Because maybe the rules of how they have to make emergency exits available and so forth have changed, and then they have to comply with that. Uh, introduce wireless internet services in the cafe and lounge areas. I think that's operational, because there's no strategic advantage to having that. It's more like a commodity. You have to have it. Yes. So it can be, yes. So it's more, it's uh, one of those ambiguous ones, too. If it's, yeah. If it's in Oslo, no, maybe. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's not. But actually, it's not so remote. <laughs> so, OK. So now we'll have a break. Uh, come back in 15 minutes, and we'll do the next part.